DDR5 error correcting SODIMs? That's a thing? Yes, that is a thing. And I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about error correcting SODIMs and mini PCs and home lab and all that in like seven minutes-ish, give or take. Okay, if you've been following this channel for a long time, you know that we love building mini PCs and doing home lab stuff and, and uh, off lab creative uses. We've got the DIY SSD NAS where you can kind of get enterprise SSDs for not a lot of money. Listen, I got 16 terabyte E1 SSDs for about $500 and then the price hockey sticked. And some of that has to do with the price of imports being insane. And some of that has to do with you know, other insanity. I also got some cast off enterprise SAS SSDs and then also the price on those hockey sticks. And I'm sorry, those, those actually should be cheaper, like 40, $50 a terabyte, $35 a terabyte, somewhere in there is a fantastic deal. And so around those sort of storage wins, it's like, hey, let's build a low cost, you know, to get you started with your home lab because you don't always necessarily want a loud, complicated server. But did you know that tape, is a low grade source of x-rays when you're unspooling it. Anyway, um, yeah, so ECC errors on the Ustar. It does actually detect and report errors correctly. In Linux, if you wanna run Linux with this, uh, that's all well and good, it works fine. The memory, the little fan in the bottom for cooling memory, also sort of important on this platform, but this is great. This is a Ryzen Pro processor. This is what you get for Pro. A lot of other mini PCs do not work with error correcting memory. And this is ECC UDIM SODIM. Thanks to a tip from a viewer, I was able to order two 48 gig sticks of ECC SODIM memory, 5600. And it does actually work at 5600 and I can get it to produce errors. Now, technically, Pass Mark Memtest 86, the pay for version, will let you inject errors. That works great on like Threadripper and Epic and uh, Intel Xeon platforms. But it's not injecting errors correctly on AM5 or on Ryzen Pro yet. And I'm not sure why. But the errors are reported to the Linux kernel and RAS daemon works correctly. So if you wanted to build a pretty nice little package with error correcting memory, this is one of the few packages from Ustar that can do that. It's very nice to see that plumbing. And uh, it also makes me wish that they had a 16 core version because 96 gigs of memory in this platform, eight cores, I can do a lot with this. But error correction is nice because these things are on for a long time and a lot of the general flakiness of, well, that computer's been on for two years, is it okay? goes away if you're using Linux as your host operating system and you, your software is reasonably up to date. And you've also got error correcting memory because on a timeline that's like three months, six months, a year, you will have some flipped bits inside your memory. And while DDR5 has some built-in error correction, that's not the whole story. So error correcting DDR5 SODIMs. If you look at this very carefully, I have two 48 gig SODIMs here and it has four extra chips, two per side. This is to detect and correct single bit errors. Well, single bits, it can actually, it just depends on how many, how spread out the errors are. But it's designed to de detect up to two bit errors and detect and correct single bit errors. It's gonna cost more because it's physically more chips. This particular implementation is Micron. And weirdly, they've used a laser to kind of mark through some of the numbers on the chip. I don't, usually that means that like these are seconds or like, I'm not sure what that means. Maybe, you know, somebody can engage below. But in terms of mini platform support, only AMD's Pro platform supports ECC. So I've got our Ustar NAS that we reviewed. This is based on an 8845. This supports ECC because it is Pro. We got our Minis Forum 7945HX. This does not support ECC. And while it might boot with ECC memory, it doesn't, the ECC function doesn't actually function, you need Pro. There's Ryzen AI and Ryzen AI Max Pro, as long as it's Pro CPU, and there's BIOS support and all the software stack is there for it, then you get ECC. Now, Ustar, I'm, I'm happy to report Ustar, it has worked. I did the testing with Memtest 86, I was able to get the red error injections, I had to get a little creative. This particular kit of memory with the Micron chips also throttles at 75 degrees C. So you need a mini PC that is also uh, has adequate cooling, especially if you're DIYing that or putting something together like our flash-based storage NAS. Most of the time, I would say that when you see, like if, you, if you're if you looking online, 
uh, there's a misleading thing that happens. And so most of the time when you see DDR5, unbuffered DDR5 DIMMs, it'll say, oh, this has the DDR5 ECC. And so even without those extra chips, DDR5 does have an ability to, to detect and correct errors in flight. So when data is being transferred from the CPU to the memory, or when data is being transferred from the memory to the CPU, there is an error detection and correction mechanism there with the transfer. But when information is just sitting in memory, it can become corrupt. DRAM requires periodic refreshes, you know? And so because of that, um, it is helpful to have extra a place to store extra bits, extra information. And that is optional. That is an optional part of the spec. And so in the case of our 48 gig DIMMs, uh, the appropriate amount of, of ECC is going to be one extra chip per four chips. And so because we've got eight chips per side, we're going to have two extra chips per side that are uh, storing all of our extra info. Uh, and also DDR5 is two channels per DIMM, which makes things complicated. Like there's a whole other DDR5, there's a part of the DDR5 standard where they try to split the parity. Like you've got one chip that's doing parity for like this half of the chip and that half of the chip. And that was added later and not well. And it was really added more for a server context, not a desktop context. See, with DDR5 planning and memory architecture, it's servers first. It's always servers first. And then the B team, sorry, B team, uh, gets assigned to figure out how to take the server memory and get it to work on desktop. And that's true. <laughs> sorry, again, B team. Uh, that's true <laughs> in terms of like the physical memory implementation, but also the people working on desktop processors and desktop implementation and like those people that have to make it work. So it's the, it's the B team on both sides. I'm so sorry, B team. You know who you are. And then the C team comes in to try to figure that out on mobile. I mean, not really. Actually, the path on mobile is more like embedded systems and industrial systems. But historically, AMD is usually run a couple of generations behind on those industrial systems. But, uh, and Intel has historically, you know, shown pretty brightly here because they would support ECC on like i3 and below, and that was fine. But weirdly, Intel would turn it off on like the i5 and the i7 for more product segmentation so that they would push you to Xeon. Uh, AMD has not yet done anything that uh, onerous and annoying. So it's like, oh, I want to run a 16 core. Yes, you totally can. It is an easier path to ECC if ECC is important to you, however, for desktop, and especially now because of Epic and AM5. And that is gonna take our conversation about so dim memory completely off the table because then you could just use regular DDR5 ECC UDIMs. And those unregistered error correcting DIMs are a lot easier to find, they're a lot cheaper, a lot more manufacturers, a lot more people putting them together. And so they're a little bit more inexpensive as a result. But know that for many PCs and home labs, and if you wanna build the ultimate, thing, you can do that. Uh, the USTAR does it. The new N5 NAS from Minis Forum does it. I don't think that I have, I've got a ton of Minis Forum stuff here. I don't think that I have anything from Minis Forum with a pro CPU that supports error correcting memory. Uh, the, the, the NAS, the new NAS, the five bay NAS that, that Minis Forum has uses the pro Ryzen AI CPU. That'll support ECC. That should be good. And then like, our, like I say, our Ustar uses a pro CPU. I've tested ECC in it. It works great. Um, I have tested a couple of products that have a pro CPU that don't support ECC because of BIOS limitations. So that is another gotcha. Just because it's got a pro CPU doesn't necessarily mean it's going to support it. But there you go. Just beware of all of that stuff with DDR5. And just because you see DDR5 ECC doesn't imply it has extra chips. You need to look at pictures of the DDR5 DIMMs because technically every DDR5 DIMM has a level of error correction, but it's mostly that data in flight uh, uh, error correction that exists, not data at rest type error correction. And even that, even, even that explanation is a bit of an oversimplification, doesn't quite align with the specification, but if it's useful to you how you think about it, extra chips versus not extra chips. Okay, fine, whatever. But yeah, look at that. DDR5 SODIMS in the wild, 96 gigs. What a fun little mini PC. All right, I want to list level one. This kind of stuff is usually like a good discussion on the forum, especially a list of hardware and Q&A. Hit us up there. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.